Today is Monday, December 18th. What to know about three hostages in Gaza killed accidentally by the Israeli military and growing threats impacting an international trade route. Also, back in the U.S., the East Coast is dealing with a major storm. What's happening and what to expect next? Plus, the official findings of what caused the death of former Friends star Matthew Perry. Prince Harry had a victory in court and all about the movie that won the weekend box office. Those stories and more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Israel's government is facing even more pressure now to scale down its war in Gaza, even from its own citizens. Some of Israel's closest European allies started calling for a ceasefire yesterday, and thousands of people protested in Tel Aviv over the weekend, demanding their government reach some kind of deal with Hamas to pause the fighting. This comes following a series of shootings, including one in which Israeli soldiers killed three hostages. They were Israelis abducted by Hamas during the October 7th terror attack. The Israeli military says it was an accident, but the hostages were shirtless, showing they had no explosives, unarmed, and bearing a makeshift white flag. Israeli soldiers apparently did not expect to be approached by hostages. They expected to find them either in a building, in a tunnel, or handcuffed. So now Israel's military chief says troops were told not to repeat that mistake. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still says his country will fight to the end, meaning until Hamas is eliminated— and unable to carry out a repeat of October 7th, when 1,200 Israelis were killed and about 240 taken hostage. And for now, the U.S. is standing by Israel in that goal. But between the hostages' death and Israel's ongoing bombardment of Gaza, the Biden administration has also warned Israel that it's starting to lose support. The rate of civilian deaths in Gaza is outpacing those in other conflict zones in the 21st century, and the humanitarian situation is growing more dire, too. The U.N. estimates 1.9 million people in Gaza have been displaced. Now aid groups worry the territory will soon be overwhelmed by starvation and disease. That said, a border crossing did open up yesterday between Israel and southern Gaza, and aid trucks came through. That's expected to increase the number of aid trucks moving into the Strip from roughly 100 a day to more than 300 a day. The U.S. Defense Secretary is also in Israel today, and reports say he'll be pushing Israeli officials to set clear milestones for the war. So stay tuned. The war in the Middle East keeps intensifying outside of Gaza, too. Over the weekend, the American and British military say they shot down 15 attack drones over the Red Sea, which is a key international trade route. They were launched from areas of Yemen controlled by Iranian-backed militants. No one was hurt and no ships in the area were damaged. But the militant group promised to keep up attacks like that until Israel ends its war in Gaza. Already, it's impacting the international shipping business, since more ships are being told to avoid the region or just pause their journey in safe waters for the foreseeable future. And that could lead to some supply chain delays. Though the U.S., U.K., France, and other countries say they're still committed to deterring the attacks as long as they need to. Well, back in the U.S., a collection of highly sensitive Russian intelligence seems to have disappeared. Several news outlets have cited sources who say a binder with classified information went missing at the end of the Trump presidency. It was apparently connected to the investigation into Russia's efforts to meddle in the 2016 American presidential election. Already, the substance of the material has been made public through a redacted version on the FBI's website. But the issue is the raw version, partly since intelligence agencies think it could reveal some of their secret sources and methods. So, to be continued. One of the most high-profile members of former President Trump's inner circle now owes a lot of money over his actions in the aftermath of the 2020 election. A jury ordered Rudy Giuliani to pay $148 million in damages for defaming two Georgia election workers when he said they rigged the 2020 election. The workers say those claims hurt their reputations, cost them jobs, and made them live in fear as they received several death threats. Giuliani has since admitted his allegations against the workers were not true, but he argued that his statements were protected by the First Amendment right to free speech. And his defense team argued he had every right to question what some people truly believe to be election fraud. During the trial, Giuliani changed his mind about speaking under oath, deciding not to. Though in the end, after hearing the jury's verdict, Giuliani told reporters he does not regret anything. And now he's promising to appeal. 
the East Coast has been dealing with an intense storm from Florida to New England, and it's expected to bring a lot more damage today. The storm is now moving along the northeastern coast. Winds are expected to bring down tree limbs, power lines, and outdoor holiday decorations. It could also bring flooding to millions of people in New England and possibly even more south, like in New York City. Already, people in the Carolinas are dealing with flooding, since up to a foot of rain fell in some parts of the states yesterday. The day before, the worst of it was in Florida. Though there is a silver lining, at least in southwest Florida, people there have been facing drought conditions and water restrictions, heading into what's normally the region's dry season. So this could potentially help where it hasn't hurt. Oh, and heads up, if you are traveling today, you might want to double check for delays since the weather on the East Coast could end up impacting the flight schedule, at least until tomorrow. Much more news for you still ahead. But first, a break for our sponsor. If you need a last minute gift or stocking stuffer, I've got you covered. Because with Lumi, you're not just giving deodorant, you're giving confidence that they're smelling fresh all day. And get this, Lumi is on the top of the most wished for list on Amazon for personal care products. So you know you're getting something people want. And for good reason, Lumi is a game changing whole body deodorant that is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. It's baking soda and paraben free. It's pH balanced to use anywhere. It is my new favorite deodorant. It actually works. And it's clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. Treat yourself or someone you know with Lumi's Starter Pack. Lumi's Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. And as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi Starter Pack with code NEWSWORTHY at lumipodcast.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumipodcast.com, that's L-U-M-E, lumipodcast.com, and use the code NEWSWORTHY. Okay, now back to the news. A recent solar flare that hit Earth was likely one of the largest ever recorded. At least that's according to the federal agency known as NOAA. A solar flare is a powerful burst of energy from the sun that can impact radio communications, electric power grids, navigation skills, and more. And this one did just that. Radio frequency blackouts were reported across the U.S. Solar flares can also supercharge the auroras. And because of this event, people could see a pretty fantastic display of the northern lights today with dancing colors of green, red, and maybe even purple. It's possible they're seen in parts of the north from Washington to Maine. The L.A. medical examiner says it's gotten to the bottom of actor Matthew Perry's sudden death. His autopsy report was released showing the friend star died from the effects of ketamine, followed by drowning. His death was ruled an accident. Perry was open about having past addiction issues. He was still receiving ketamine infusions for depression and anxiety. And the report says the level of ketamine in his blood was so high, it couldn't have come from his last known treatment at a clinic. It's not clear if Perry got it from another provider or elsewhere. The FDA says ketamine is safe and effective, but only when it's taken under a healthcare professional supervision in a clinical setting. Problem is, it's also a common party drug that's even been nicknamed Special K since it has hallucinogenic properties. No matter how Perry got it, some depression researchers say his death should be a wake-up call that ketamine needs to be used appropriately. And the American Society of Ketamine Physicians, Psychotherapists, and Practitioners says it's working on ethical and scientific standards for providers now. Well, heads up, some popular breakfast and snack foods are being pulled off store shelves. Quaker Oats recalled dozens of products like its Chewy Bars and Simply Granola cereals since they could be contaminated with salmonella. And they were sold in all 50 states. People who get sick from salmonella typically start getting stomach issues anywhere from six hours to six days after eating tainted food. More serious cases can include fever, rashes, headaches, and more. Though so far, no one has been reported sick from the Quaker Oats recall. But if you have any of the affected products, Quaker says you should throw them away. We have a full list in today's episode notes. Prince Harry won a partial but significant victory in a highly watched eavesdropping case in Britain. A judge ruled journalists and private investigators working for Mirror Group newspapers broke the law by repeatedly hacking into Prince Harry's phone in the early 2000s, and that company executives covered it up. The judge ordered the media group to pay the Duke of Sussex about $180,000. Prince Harry had won it about three times that amount. Mirror Group accepted the judgment, though, and apologized for violating his privacy rights. Prince Harry has been vocal about British tabloids intruding into his life, bucking a long-standing royal family tradition of avoiding such disputes. In fact, he testified in court during the case, the first time a senior member of the royal family has done so in more than 100 years. 
He says the UK's tabloid culture is part of the reason he stepped down in his role as a working royal to move to California with his family. Now, Prince Harry said the ruling is vindicating and affirming, warning other media outlets against using similar tactics. He has filed two other lawsuits against tabloids over hacking allegations. The character of Willy Wonka can still draw a crowd, even though it's been nearly 60 years since Charlie and the Chocolate Factory first came out. This time, audiences have been pouring into movie theaters to see Wonka. It's a prequel starring Timothy Chalamet, and it's considered a big comeback for the live-action musical genre. It opened as the number one film worldwide, bringing in more than $151 million, and it's expected to keep bringing in money since it has been well-received by both critics and audiences. Plus, the holiday season typically brings in more movie traffic as people look for fun ways to have fun with the family. Wonka is about to get more big-name competition, though. Before the year is out, the new version of The Color Purple, the latest Aquaman, Poor Things, and Ferrari are all set to be released. That's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, support for today's episode comes from AG1. The nutritional drink AG1 has become part of my morning routine. I first gave AG1 a try because we were talking about partnering and I wanted to make sure I actually liked it. Well, I now take AG1 every day before I eat anything else, and I was surprised at how quickly I started noticing a difference. It makes me feel ready to take on the day, I feel a boost in energy, I find myself not reaching for coffee or tea quite as often, And if you're not familiar, AG1 can replace a lot of the other supplements you might take, like a daily multivitamin, minerals, pre and probiotics for gut health, adaptogens, and a greens blend. And you get it all in just one scoop of powder. I always put in ice water with a splash of lemon juice, mix, and I'm ready to go. AG1 is made from 75 of the highest quality whole food sourced ingredients from around the world, intentionally curated for their ability to nourish all of the body systems in harmony. If you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. Okay, now back to Money Monday. Wholesale retailer Costco used to be known for its cheap gas, bulk toilet paper supplies, and $5 rotisserie chickens. But now you can add gold bars to that list. Yeah, Costco started selling 24-karat, one-ounce gold bars a few months ago. Each one comes sealed and individually stamped with a unique serial number for just over $2,000 a pop with a limit of two per Costco membership. While they're now so popular, they usually sell out hours after being posted on Costco's online store. So why have these gold bars become so popular? Well, as Axios explains it, buying physical gold is an investment strategy that's thousands of years old, especially in times of economic uncertainty, since in theory, at least, gold holds its value. And Costco has now made buying easier than ever. Though it is worth noting, if gold does go up in value and you decide you want to cash in, gold tends to be much harder to sell than it is to buy. And Costco won't be buying them. In fact, they're non-refundable. All right, thank you so much for listening today and every day. We'll be back with more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day. 